We drove from Gander for a long hour to Twillingate. After crossing the small harbor bridge by Shoal Tickle, we passed the local Twillingate Bakery with its interesting dining choices. Crowhead in the sunshine held its old charm for us. It felt great to be back. Ruth drank in the view of the bay and the nearby rock strat statue of Queen Victoria. Later, we celebrated with a lobster supper. May be caught by this fisherman tending his traps in our bay. At Victoria Cottage, Ruth did projects while Dawn worked. Weekends were filled with local hikes, starting with Brownie's Cove outside Carter Cove, where Frank Dove settled was quite beautiful. Interesting emergency fire extinguishers in the Dildo Run Provincial Campground. A sleepy cove trail below the nearby Long Point Light Station began with a walk through the forest. First stop was Nanny's Hole, where the local sealers used to land their catch and pull themselves up the steep slope with a rope threaded through these iron pickets. Then we hiked along the rugged coastline with its great views leading to Sleepy Cove. We saw lots of beautiful crackerberry and blue flag iris plants along the way. The cove was once the site of a copper mine. And there are still various remains of the works in evidence. Lots of up and down hill, sometimes with staircases, and always with great views. The hike to the top of Twillingate was hot and muggy. Along the way we were advised of various taboos. In spite of the haze, the view from the lookout at the top made the hike worthwhile. And the wildflowers were spectacular in their various colors. Yellow arnica ragwort and blue harebell. Our next exploratory drive in this area took us to Ladle Cove, which had a hedge of very weathered tuckamore and great garden rocks along the beach. From there, we found Fredericton, where the Ahern Trader ran aground in 1960 after unloading its cargo of hay. The road to Herring Neck led us straight to Salt Harbor, where this old stage and its reflections caught Ruth's eye. The sea was boiling at the entrance of the tickle that day. On a subsequent trip, we visited Ed and Joanne Her Han at the Mud Puppy Pottery Shop near Loon Bay. We escaped having bought only two coffee mugs. Street signs are very functional and descriptive in this part of the world. Aside from the ubiquitous main and water streets, there are many versions of, quote, the view. Along with these samples, we also saw marsh view, harbor view, bay view, fair view, and beach view, among others. And on Change Islands, the signs incorporate an artistic fish design. This rainbow during our last week heralded great exploring weather. Off to Bridgeport and then Tizard's Harbor. We were able to see these outports in the sun as opposed to the rainy day we had last year when we visited this area. Here we also saw the fragrant white water lily instead of the usual yellow pond lilies we had seen elsewhere. Outside Little Harbor, 
we relived more history as we hiked first to Jones Cove with its beautiful cobble beach. Then we backtracked past these Canadian burnet and crackerberry plants to get to the natural arch. On the way, we passed the remnants of this old store and the Keefe's root cellars dating back to the 1930s. Primitive but functional for storage of vegetables during the winter. The arch was spectacular. Nearby, Ruth harvested a few handfuls of very tasty blueberries. while Don photographed the churning sea on the rocks below. Then back to Little Harbor, where we spent some time admiring the beautiful long liner and dory boat models of Otto Young. As well as the real boats in what is really quote, the Little Harbor. Our last local hike was the Summerford Trail, up 307 steps to a lookout that offered a fine view of the Summerford area, as well as a great place to enjoy a fresh crab sandwich. Over the course of these travels, we saw several unique wood piles that made very efficient use of the available storage space, be it a nook beside a shed a walkway to a stage, a very high set of stacks, or just a vertical drying pile.